Number seven, Humanarian. Oh, sweet Gabriel's horn that's bright! That's what the glasses are for. Got any spares? Sure do. Oh, very funny. And that's why I'm a professional. Professional what? Bowling! You're too kind. For now. Anyway, I always like it when a song explores concepts from another time period, because it allows the show to break from the typical elements and give the audience something unique. Humanarian accomplishes this by giving us an 80s pop song with visuals that would be right at home in an 80s music video. We've got split screens, hazy imagery, and completely over-the-top makeup and hairstyles. This is in my opinion the most visually appealing song in the entire show. The song takes on this surreal 80s music video style with a wonderful chorus accompanied by a variety of synthesizers. The lyrics feel like something out of a Madonna or Michael Jackson video which sort of authenticates the 80s vibe that brings you into this musical fantasy sequence. On another note, this musical number is also a shout out to another Hasbro toy line called Gem and the Holograms. It's pretty easy to see the resemblance based on Minka and Penny Lane's image, as well as the drums that Zoe performs with. So, does this mean the entire song was a toy commercial? If it was, then it's better than any toy commercial I've seen. Number 6 Won't have to look for, and all around the world, Behold the Pet Fashion Expo, home of the finest pet fashions from all over the world, the stage for our next song. Not to mention all the ladies. Well, we should probably get back to the countdown. Yeah, you do that while I go mingle for a while. Wait for me, ladies. He is so random at times. Anyway, we had a difficult time choosing which one of these songs would be on the list, and considering that both songs are from the same episode, we decided to give them both the number 6 spot on the list. Just hear us out for a moment. It's very hard to wrap up an entire season in song form. I mean, how do you sum up the themes and motifs of 26 episodes in a 3 minute song? The answer is to give those songs a running theme that you can focus the song around. Daniel Ingram has shown on multiple occasions that he's capable of this. So it was no surprise that both Won't Have to Look Far and All Around the World did a great job at this. Whoa, dude. We have got to plan a trip to Brazil one of these days. Brazilian pets can't get enough of me. Well, I'm glad you had fun, but we're still waiting for you on your thoughts. No prob. Now, what I like about these songs is how both highlight the major turning points in Blight's career and her new life in Downtown City. The song Won't Have to Look For focused on the unimaginable friendship she found with the pets and also sparked her pet fashion line. And this is where All Around the World comes in. The song demonstrates the different pet fashions from all over the world coming together to showcase the prevailing styles of their culture, something Blythe has already incorporated into a fashion from a trip to Rio, France, and Shanghai. All Around the World sums up the travel and fashion theme of Season 2, and Won't Have to Look Far summed up how Blythe had to make peace with getting help from others. This is a pretty difficult thing for her to do considering how capable she is for someone her age. The beat of each song works really well too, each one being upbeat in their own way while still feeling like two completely different songs. While I do like the compelling lyrics of Won't Have to Look For, I'm a sucker for the upbeat vocals of All Around the World. As for the next song, it takes upbeat to whole new levels and darker ones too. Number 5 Wolfified Ah, yeah! As a Michael Jackson fan, this was a superb homage to his work and his influence on modern music. A parody of his song, Thriller, Wolfified embodies both the energy and the beat of a Michael Jackson song. On a side note, back in early 2013 when I was still considering reviewing the show for the first time, I was looking for some sample footage to give me an idea about what the show was about. I found Wolfified, and I made my decision to review the show. This song was a great homage to Michael Jackson's Thriller, and the way the song utilized the dark atmosphere and ominous music similar to what it was parodying made it all the more memorable. I especially love how the music starts out in this smooth bass line and transitions into this hardcore guitar piece that adds so much energy to the song. 
The visuals are dark, the animation is dynamic, the music is outstanding, definitely worthy of being this high on the list. This song also came at an interesting time in the episode as well. Before the song started, the paranoia of the characters in both storylines is causing the characters to slowly lose their minds. This song comes in at the climax of that paranoia, and then everything calms down as soon as it's finished. Unfortunately, to get higher on this list, you need to have something completely different. The song in the number 4 spot will now demonstrate. Wait, what happened to the scene where we turn into our wolf counterparts? Had to be cut for time reasons, but if we have enough time left over in the end, then we can do the scene. Okay, seems fair enough. Number 4 A Skunk is a Skunk Most country ballads are known for their ability to express the emotional journey of the character, and in this duet, we see Mitzi and Pepper explain that the scent of a skunk is a crucial representation of their inner feelings and who they are as an individual. Mitzi was given this ability of producing pleasant scents no matter what emotion she felt, so she never got a chance to express her true self. The song really conveys the skunk that Mitzi wants to be and taught that you should stay true to yourself. Getting a country song into a show that takes place in an urban setting isn't exactly all that easy, but I think they pulled it off pretty well here. Both Tabitha St. Germain and Ashley Ball did a fantastic job here, both illustrating how different their characters' upbringings were, yet how they can still relate to each other with the unique trait of their species. This is why it had to be a country song because the simplicity of the message and the music allowed the connection to blossom all the more. I've noticed that Season 3 has been quite the season for the more personal songs from the characters depicting their struggles or highlighting major influences in their life. Yep, Season 3 did take a closer look into our characters' deeper dilemmas and the songs did them justice. The song in the number 3 spot is probably the best example of that. Number 3, My Biggest Secret The secret recipe remains to be a pivotal moment in the show for many reasons, and this song is one of them. Blythe now needs to reveal something about herself that can make her an outcast to someone that she considers the closest thing she has ever had to a sister. So she's torn between telling her and keeping silent. This song did a great job of portraying the conflict that Blythe was going through, and the lyrics demonstrate how close Blythe is to young me and how she can't afford to lose her. This was a very emotional song from Blythe as she must confess something truly difficult to believe in. Heck, even Blythe isn't 100% sure on how she can talk to the pets, so the stakes are pretty high at this point. The song had compelling lyrics and marked a major turning point in Blythe's friendship with young me. This song remains to be my absolute favorite from the show. So how could it have been topped by two more songs? Well, technically three to be exact. Number 2 Stay Here Forever and Won't Be Long As part of the Season 1 finale, both songs highlighted Season 1 perfectly and features two heartwarming songs that deal with the departure of our main character and realizing that it's not a goodbye but more of until we meet again. Stay Here Forever focuses on the pets grieving over the departure of a new friend and throws in some comedic moments to not make it entirely sad because then we get another Disney tearjerker moment. This was an instance of the show trying to tell a mature storyline, so the songs had to reflect that maturity in an emotional manner. Stay Here Forever did a great job of handling how the pets were first taking the news that Blythe was leaving. Thinking that she would be gone forever after everything they've been through, they would make this some kind of plea. Won't Be Long, while short, is probably the better of the two in my opinion. This is because it shows how the pets have matured by having Blythe in their lives, and how they've accepted that Blythe will only be gone for a while and will return soon. This was a perfect song to tie up all loose ends of Season 1, but it's only number 2 on the list because we needed a song that summarized the entire theme of the show and goes above and beyond the typical musical number that each season had. So we looked around and found the perfect song. But first, a few honorable mentions. So old, they're all covered in 
before I step on your feet. I spin like a dervish, just try and run. That don't throw me zero to 101. Number one, pets and humans. Throughout the show, we have seen how much of an influence that having pets in your life can not only improve your life, but the pets as well. You, as the owner, have found some meaning in your life because you have found someone to connect with, while your pet has found a friend that they can count on all the time. The end result is that both parties find happiness, a perfect win-win scenario. Who doesn't want that? Heck, even the Biscuit Twins. Two of the most self-centered, egotistical bitches to ever walk the earth found something like that when they adopted Cashmere and Velvet. And the Chinchillas found something resembling a happy life under Whitney and Britney. If that isn't proof that this song is telling the truth, I frankly don't know what is. During Season 3, we've seen the bond between humans and the pets grow exponentially and demonstrate that you don't need a universal language to communicate to one another because your special bond with each other is what brings you together. The song executed that perfectly and is by far the biggest game changer for the show. It highlighted all the best parts of the series and gave Blight's gift a whole new meaning by having it be looked at as an experience rather than a plot device. While I openly admit that the episode it was attached to wasn't the greatest season finale that the show has had, it was this song and everything that it represented that made it worthwhile. Not only are we seeing how far Blythe has come as a leader and an ambassador, but the song also shows us just how she has influenced the lives of those around her. Throw in an amazing duet by Zoe and Heidi Klum and you've got an absolute masterpiece on your hands. Overall, this song was quintessential to the show's overall theme and made it feel like the finale to a long journey for our characters and executed that perfectly. I don't know what lies ahead for Blythe and the pets, but you can assure they'll be there for one another to help them along the way. And that was our Top 13 Littlest Pet Shop Songs. Feel free to leave a comment below about some of your favorite songs from the show. Thank you all for watching, I'm Record. And I'm Oblivion317, and we've watched it. And you can too. It's a rerun. On another note, do we have time for one more song? Hmm, I might go over budget, but what the heck, let's do it. Awesome! Now let's get dangerous. Those claws, those teeth, who's that underneath? Are those your friends there? Your eyes can't believe they will walk the fight. No need to try, cause there's no one here to save you. And you cannot deny they can walk the fight. Just say goodbye, cause there's no place left to run to. There's no place left to hide.